Thank you so much for um, uh, hanging in there with us tonight, and thank you so much for watching our film. Uh, it's such an honor to be here with this organization in front of all of you. Um, the one thing that we always tell you know everyone who uh, we're fortunate enough to show this film to is that you can ask us anything. Um, we're all about transparency and accountability, and uh, uh, there, there is one. There's one major update that, that is not in the film. Um, uh, my mother passed away uh, right after this film came out three years ago, and uh, I don't even know why we haven't put it in there. Uh, I just got a block on it or something. I don't know, but uh, she um, she died of her injuries. And, uh, but uh, she did, the film came out and she knew that, you know, we were making the film, you saw that, I mean, she participated in it. She had every chance to tell me no and she always felt that, her, you know, she wanted her story to be out there. And you saw how she fought uh, up until the day she died. And um, when the film debuted on HBO, it was a December when we came out, and then uh, there was just this, I mean, we had no expectation for this movie. We, were, we finished this movie two hours before it came out. I mean, we, we were just trying to get it out there. And uh, there was this, we were so lucky uh, to be able to not only tell our story, but to have HBO um, give it to 20 million of their viewers. And um, we, the press grabbed onto it. Uh, the, the patients, the public, you know, and the patients and their families really jumped, they, they jumped on board. Well, we, I was definitely, uh, as I told Dave, that the first time I ever showed it in front of medical people, I, Dave called me up and I said, I don't know, I, don't, I think the medical people are gonna hate this movie. And he goes, I, I don't know, I think, you, I think you're wrong on that. And uh, I told my mom that we were going out to show, you know, we showed her the reviews for the movie and we showed her all the emails we got. We got like 20,000 emails and Facebooks and, and we read them to her, so she saw that her, her, uh, her story was catching on out there. But then when we told her that we were screening it for medical people, as you know, she, she, her father was a doctor, my uncles are doctors, and she, she, you know, she couldn't talk, but she's like, well, <laughs> what happened? I said, it's, it, mom, you're, you're, she was a teacher. I said, you're, you're teaching. You're, you're a teacher now forever, mom. So uh, she, she, before she passed away, she did get to know that uh, her story uh, was resonating with, with audiences all, you know, it was nonpartisan, nonpolitical kind of stuff. She just, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, she, she, she passed away. Oh, I, I do want to add one other little thing, then we'll take any Nobody's questions. Nobody's asked a question yet, hon. I know, but this one, uh, so when my mom died, she had this great hospice doctor but the doctor listed it as natural causes. And I'm like, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. After all of this, and I was so exhausted. I was just, and, and our, we had this funeral director who had literally just seen the movie the night before. And she said, well, Steve, you know, you gotta fight that. And I'm like, I've just had 10 years of fights. I cannot fight this. I'm gonna let it go. And our funeral director called the, the medical examiner's medical. office and, and the, the head person and said, um, she asked me, would you mind? I said, yeah, go ahead, but I, I, I'm not going to do it. I, I, I'm done. And uh, I got a call the next day from the medical examiner's office. They watched the movie. They said, do we have permission to requisition all of the records from Aurora, Advocate Aurora? And I said, knock yourself out. You know, I was just like so done because my mother had just died. And then three days later, I get a call from the medical examiner's office. She says, look, we're so sorry, um, but we've looked at everything now. And uh, we're, we rarely do this, and I don't know what it's like in other states, but in Wisconsin, I'm told this is very rare. They changed uh, the, her the cause of death from natural causes to accidental death due to medical error, which <laughs> meant a lot to me. And, and Megan, our funeral director, was the one who did it, you know, because uh, she, she just, you know, she just cared. And that, that's one other thing I would like to share with you. Watching everybody today is that you saw for years, we, we thought we were not, 
not only just all alone, but you saw like this kind of uncaring group of people that we were up against. I still, I'm in back there going, I, they just, I, don't, I don't get it. But then here we are with all of you and you guys are all like, you care in the extreme. And uh, I mean, you, you, you fill my tank with gas. Today was just a, it was just awesome to watch all of you participate today, so thank you. Any, any questions? <laughs> Uncle Ted. Uh, yes, yes, we did. Um, as you all saw, that Uncle Ted was all in. He was the one. He was the general. I was just the, you know, I was the foot soldier. He told me what to do, and I did it. And then, as we got closer to trial, um, you know, I would always send him all the medical reports and all the legal and the depositions and stuff. And, and he stopped reading them. And I called my aunt, who's married to him. She's the nurse. And I said, "What's going on with Ted?" He's not like returning my calls or e emails. And she said, Ted's, he's on the fence. This is like six years in. I'm like, on the fence? I'm out there with my ass flapping in the wind. And Ted is the guy, he, you know, what? And he said, and what she told me was that he went out golfing with some of his doctor buddies and mentioned that he was in this... Uh, peripherally involved in this litigation of some kind over his sister and the brain thing and all the facts. And he, um, they didn't like it. So Ted was out. And then she told me the only person, she said, the only person you can get Ted back in is, is me. So I called him. You saw the call. And I thought, I can't believe this. And Margot actually filmed it. I didn't even, you know, I was, I never thought he would cut out like that. But he cut out, and then we had to, he had to be subpoenaed for his deposition. And I, it's not really clear in the movie, but the first question that the defense, we had one lawyer, and they had like 12, and, and they were all afraid of Ted. The, the defense attorneys had never in their careers had a doctor on the other side, a plaintiff. So they were like Dr. Payne. Oh, can we get you like a ham sandwich? Would you like a massage? I mean, it, was, it was ridiculous. And I'm sitting next to Ted at this deposition. And the first question is, did you tell Steve Burroughs to get an attorney? Because we had all been asked that same question. Why did I get an attorney so fast? And I said, my Uncle Ted told me to do it. And Margot, Cindy, my sister, so they finally asked my uncle. And he goes, I did not tell Steve Burroughs to get an attorney. It was like, oh. That was like one of the worst moments in my life, actually. And then he lied 30 more times during that deposition. Then he got thrown off her own case. <laughs> it's almost comical now that it, you know, it's years away. But yeah, that's the, the reason is, a, I guess you would say, peer pressure, peer pressure I, would, I would call it cowardice. Um, yeah, he, he just about killed our case. And maybe actually did. Great question, though. Thank you. Yes, sir. Dr. Ramsey. Thank you. And, uh, sorry, yeah, thank you. Um, really was an amazing film. Congratulations on having the fortitude to be able to make that movie. That was tremendous. Thank you. Um, medical profession clearly failed you and failed your mother, but the legal profession failed as well. And I'm, I just wonder, I've been involved a lot because I ran a department for 30 years with a lot of malpractice suits and legalities and... Uh, it's almost a game with the lawyers, with the attorneys. It's not right or wrong. Uh, they're using trickery. That you find out the defense attorneys and the uh, uh, other guys um, are drinking at night together. They're, yes. they're, you know, they're buddies. They train together. They, whatever. It, it, it seems to me there ought to be a. We ought to have a better system of bringing accountability in on us. And, you know, we've talked about a National Patient Safety Board, but yes. this isn't part of it, I don't think. I don't think we'd have the wherewithal to be able to handle this kind of thing, but there ought to be a way that the state medical boards could really put something really independent into assessing a standard of care uh, and, and have some real thought behind it and so that, um, you know, clearly medicine failed there. They made some terrible mistakes. Um, the legal profession didn't help you. The malpractice system didn't work, and it should have worked. 
Uh, and yet I don't think it's a good system, having seen so much of it in action, that um, I, I think we have to have some better system of accountability. And I'm really not sure what it is or how you could even change it, um, because uh, there's, you know, it, it's been that way for so long. I mean, different states do have tort reform or changes that limit what they can do sometimes, but um, we, we, we want something that works for you and, you know, censors us if we do something wrong. Uh, and, and so that everybody learns from it and um, it, it's done in a just, fair way and uh, all these shenanigans that keep going on in the court shouldn't happen and yet I think they do. And um, I'm not sure it's about right or wrong at all. I think it's, um, and trying to get a solution, um, it, it's more financial for the players involved and uh, not your best interest necessarily at all. Well, Very well gonna, said, thank you. I'm, can I take this yes, for please. a sec? One thing, you're right, the adversarial system does not work. And it's, um, like immediately after this, that the doctors basically turned their backs to us. They wouldn't talk to us. We had no other way to try to find out what happened to Judy, and that's how come the lawyer, you know, that, that was our option. Um, one of the things that when we've been showing the film to young medical students, and um, one of their first questions is, if somebody would have sat down with you right afterwards and apologized and explained what had happened and took responsibility for it financially and otherwise and helped your mother-in-law, would, would you have wanted to sue? And I can assure everyone we would not have done that because it, what happened really hurt Judy. I mean, it ruined the rest of her life and it was not how she wanted to live. But it also, her family was totally impacted also. I mean, we've just had to sell our house in California to, because we got so into this and uh, trying to help her, we put ourselves, you know, we didn't even count ourselves anymore, so. We didn't know it was gonna go on for 10 years yeah. either. There was a point where I was told early on, we don't think she's gonna survive. So it became week to week, and then she came out of it, and then was she gonna come back? And then it's like six yeah. months, and then it's a year, the next thing you know, it's 2014, it's 2016. And as you saw, like I, I've, I kind of lost my shit. I mean, I literally, you know, I look at that, and I go, I, I'm like just this side of Ted Kaczynski, <laughs> you know? I'm, I'm kind of out there, because I was so obsessed with what they didn't do, right? And, and I think Margo's right. Like, we, we've heard it from so many other patients, and, and we know that the vast majority of doctors and nurses and hospitals are all doing the right thing. We're all trying to do the right thing. The question is the moment of truth, right? Because no one wakes up and says, hey, today I'm gonna cut off the wrong leg, or I'm gonna operate on the wrong side of the body, or I'm gonna do something wrong. That's not, the first harm, it, it, you, you teach this, uh, Tim, you teach this as well, you know, the first harm is never intentional. But that second harm, that third harm, that fourth harm, lying to us, changing those anesthesia records. I would have never known that, but my uncle looked at it, he goes, fake. In 10 seconds he saw it. And then you've got all these expert witnesses on the defense, by the way, on video, they're all saying the same thing. So, but the adversarial court thing, I can tell you, in our experience, does not work and She's right, if someone would have sat us down and said, Steve, this happened, we are sorry, we're gonna do everything we can to get your mom back the way, and, and, and we're gonna teach it, and we're gonna tell everybody in the hospital how this went awry, and we're gonna just make it right. And I guarantee you, I wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't be here today. You know, I think, and I don't know about other families, most of the families that we've talked to that had this just want the same thing we wanted. Just be straight with us. Tell us, you know, give us the bad news, but look us in the eye and don't lie. It's not just tell the truth. It's all, don't lie. I mean, and patients know that, that doctors are human and, they're, you know, mistakes are going to happen. And, of course, you don't want one to happen to you. 
But when it does, I think if, if, if there's openness and transparency and uh, very few people are going to want to continue to fight because their lives have already been irreparably harmed by, by the air. So uh, if they don't have to fight in court, fight the doctors, fight the system, they can start trying to heal. And that's something that, like, we've been asked, especially him, about finding closure. And I can tell no. everyone. <laughs> yeah. Not there's, me. Yeah. There's no closure. And, and it's hard. I would just also add that, like, you saw that nurse, that young nurse. She was a 23-year-old nurse who was left with my mother in that ICU with no bedside doctor. She had only been a nurse for four months, I think. This, this poor girl, I, I felt bad for her, right? We're at trial, and I, I can see, you know, we're over here and they're over there. I can see her family. Her family is sobbing. You know, they're talking about, you know, somebody told, do I think that that girl went in and changed those records by herself? I do not. I mean, she did, but somebody told her to do it. But that girl, by the way, at the end of that trial, she was no longer a nurse. She quit. What kind of promise did that young lady have? If she would have been supported. You know, her, her system threw her literally under the bus. And, you know, we would go, like, during this trial, we, would, we were told to never look at them, don't look at their family. And, you know, we'd go out in the hall and go to the restroom, and I'd see Emily, and she'd look at me, and I knew she wanted to talk to me, and I wanted to talk to her. And I wonder what would have happened if we would have talked 10 years before. I think this whole thing could have been avoided. Did anybody learn anything? Like, did any of the parties in this, our story, did, you know, did they learn anything? Did medicine get any better? Like you said, doctor, did the legal system get any better? No. No. And we, we all know there's a better way. Yes, sir. So, um... Steve, thanks again for sharing this. And you and I have talked about, and I want to follow up on what he said. Yes, please. As a, myself, a physician and an attorney, there's professional standards for the medical profession, which failed you, but also from the legal profession. Are you at liberty to talk about some of the conversations we've had about the legal approach? No. Uh, well. Or... No, because you, you look at this as an attorney and go, this is legal malpractice. Letting those people out of the lawsuit the way they did, the way they prosecuted and the rest of it. So many of us are watching this. We go to yeah. Steve and go, are you effing kidding me? Yes. You got, just like you said, you got whacked by the medical profession, but also the legal profession from the professionalism on the part of the legal people. Yes. But I'm not sure you can comment on that. Well, right? I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of dance around it in the best way I can. However... So we had this screening um, shortly after the film came out. We, you know, we trusted our lawyer. We, we, oh, he's, you know, he's been doing this for years. It's a strategy, I guess. I don't know. You know but when he dropped Bauer and Hoime, the, the surgeon and anesthesiologist, we thought in our gut, wait, that ain't right. But he didn't even tell us. He just did it. And apparently that can't happen, but he did. So anyway, the film comes out. We're screening it for, um, actually, you know, it was a MedStar screening, Dave. And one of the top lawyers for MedStar came up afterwards. He said, I'm so sorry this happened to your mother. This is the first thing he said. I'm so sorry this happened to your mother. Please tell me you're going after your lawyer. And I remember going, what? We just, uh... and he goes, take a hard look. And I think the one thing we can tell you is in the last couple of years, uh, there are attorneys who are very sophisticated with this kind of stuff. They, I mean, you know, they see what you all saw. You don't have to be a lawyer to see that something went wrong, wrong here with the legal part of it. When Bauer and Hoyman were dropped, that can't happen. And apparently, uh, legally, it can't happen, and it did. And all I can say is we've, we are... <laughs> yes. Good. What's, what's the best way to say it? <laughs> I don't recall. <laughs> Thank That's you. That's good. <laughs> I don't. Well, we, we, we're further along than just looking at our options. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. I got to write that one down. <laughs> yes. But, but that's and now true. That's, that, that's enough. And what, you're, what, what you are suspecting here is true. So. 
That's all I can say. I've said too much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good question, Tim. Steve, yes, sir. Steve uh, I want to thank you for putting the little part in about the Mayo Clinic and talking about the opposite end of the spectrum yes. as to what to expect. I, I'm full disclosure, I'm with the Mayo Clinic. So again, thank you. I appreciate it you being in there. Uh, I wanted to ask you though, uh, I know there are a lot of organizations that try really hard to do the right thing and, and your situation is quite unique. Did you come across anybody else that's doing things uh, a little bit different, a little bit better for patients that maybe just didn't make the cut in your film or didn't get acknowledged in some way? Well, great question. Uh, yes, but when we made this film, um, I have to say, I mean, this is We were like every other harmed patient. We didn't know that this was a, even a thing. You know, right. we didn't know this existed. So, yeah, when we first started Mayo Clinic. Exactly. Yeah. We didn't know there was a patient safety movement. Yeah. We didn't know patient safety was a thing. We had no clue. We didn't know that you've all been working on this stuff for a long time. And we, you know, we, we met uh, Dr. McCary through his book and in my mind, just in popular culture, the, you know, the, the Mayo Clinic was like, you know, they're, they're the good guys, right? They're the cavalry or something. But we, we, we didn't have, there was no cutting, that, that, that was our only interview of, of, HBO wanted that. They wanted, they said, can you show somebody who's kind of doing it right? And uh, we interviewed them, but when the film came out, then we started meeting all of these other organizations other hospital systems across the, the, Medstar, the globe. MedStar Institute Johns for Hopkins. Johns Hopkins. Um, there are literally dozens that we've met that we've actually worked with and screened the movie for, that we didn't know. And I, you know, that's, you asked that question. I like, I wish I would have known when we were making this movie that you all existed. Right. Yeah. Like, Leah called me cold. I'm with the LeapFrog group. I'm like, what's the LeapFrog group? I don't know. And we were in it, like we were so deep in the trenches, but I would love to, and we have a couple tricks up our sleeve, I shouldn't say tricks, I mean like projects where I have now, like this is like the sad movie, right? This is like what's wrong. There needs to be another film or a television series or something that does exactly what you're talking about. That, you know, I, I, I showed this one, right? This train wreck, but there's too many good things happening that we didn't know about, that we now do know about, that need to be shared with the world. And that's, that's, that's our mission now is, um, I would say, TV show, basically. That's what, that's what I'm working on right now. Thank you for saying that. Yes. And then we can get all of these, like, all of these wonderful things you're all doing um, in an episodic thing, because I, I feel like if I were to make a, another feature film documentary like this and crammed it all in, then all the good guys are getting like two minutes. And it's like, it's just, I'd rather like have a long-term episodic thing where you can spend time with different organizations and different people who are all doing the right things. Yeah, new chapter, turn the page. Exactly, right. And a TV series is a better way, I think, to doing it this time around. But yeah, great question, thank you. So. Yes. Steve, I have a question. Oh, yes. Um, do you think that Aurora has learned any lessons from this? <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Did you hear the question? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, does anyone want to take a guess, a wild guess? I can, I can tell you that uh, when this film came out, uh, oh, I got I to gotta tell this story. So. When HBO decided they were gonna make this movie, they told me about four years before it came out, uh, it was such a slow process, they said, we're gonna make this movie and we're gonna to have to legally vet every single thing you're saying because everything in your movie is kind of crazy and we, we kind of don't believe it. So we took a full year with the HBO lawyers, like the Game of Thrones lawyers, and they went through every second of this film to make sure we weren't, that we were telling the truth. And then, they also said you can't tell anybody you're making this movie for until it comes out because they that was really hard for them. yeah very difficult and they said especially Aurora because Aurora had their day in court they had every chance they had seven years to do the right thing they decided not to so just let's shut our mouth and we'll release the film and a, a week before it came out HBO put out a one minute trailer I don't know, it's still out there it, it, they, they cut together a really tight one minute trailer. 
and kind of told the world that this existed. And we started getting calls from all of the defense attorneys in this movie, for all the doctors, on our personal phone, threatening us. Hey, we heard you. We heard you're making a movie about your mom, and you better not be mentioning any specifics about her case, and you best not be talking about our doctor, and you best not be talking about the evidence. And they were like, I, I could play you some of these messages. I, I mean, honestly, they scared scared me to death, you know, several years ago. But now they're really laughable. And we get, we turned it all over to HBO. I said they're they're threatening Margot and I. They said, Ah, HBO goes, We got it. We got this. And they sent Aurora a letter because Aurora was de demanding to see the movie before it came out with the public. They said, we demand to see this movie or we're gonna sue you to kingdom come. And uh, I love this, this letter, it's just a one paragraph letter. It says, HBO wrote Aurora back and they said, dear Aurora, thank you for your interest. Um, it's not our policy to show the movie prior to when we debut it, but if you'd like to watch it, um, you'll have to get an H HBO subscription. <laughs> it airs tomorrow night, Monday, eight o'clock, but you're on Central, so that's seven. <laughs> and let us know what you think. And that's when we knew we're, we're okay. But I can tell you that Aurora has never apologized. Um, I mean, nothing. And they, by the way, that, that EICU system, they're proud of it. They still have it. They doubled down on it. They, they love it. They think it's a great, you know, they don't want to pay doctors. They like, I mean, that, that thing, when, you know, because we went to trial, it took seven years to find out that there was one doctor watching 160 critical care patients like my mother with cameras not on. Is that, what do you all make of that? So they're still doing it. And so, so Aunt Helen, to answer your question, uh, I don't, no. No, they don't, uh, I don't know. I keep waiting for the phone to ring. It's just not happening. I have another question. Um, would you consider showing this at WHO? Sure. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. We'd be honored. Yeah, I mean, yes, we, okay. we, we'd love it. We'd love the opportunity to show it to anybody that might benefit from it. Um, I, I really don't know why the film has, I don't really understand uh, why the film has resonated, because I'm, I'm just too close to it. But some, there's, I, I think it's my mother, maybe. You, you could tell me. Um, but she just, uh, somebody said at one of the, one of the hospitals in, uh, on the East Coast, they said, your mom is every mom. Your, your mom is my mom. And you and Margot and our family are our family. And people, I think, based on what they've told us, is that when they're watching our film, they're projecting themselves and their families, like, if, if this happened to me, would, you know, and then, when, like, Dave, you said at the top, you know, where I was completely wrong about the reaction from the, the medical community, um, you know, they're embarrassed, and they, they, they want to do better, and when we show these young medical students, they're like, I can tell you that one of the nicest things that anyone's ever said, and it was from the Mayo Clinic, it was last summer, and there was this young, uh, oncologist who came up to me and he said, it was hard to believe he was a doctor. He looked like he was 14 years old. And he said, he said, Mr. Burroughs, I just want to say I'm sorry about your mother and I want you to know that how your mother conducted herself will forever change the way I practice medicine. And I thought, that is the best thing I've heard, period. And he meant it, you know? So, and I don't know why he felt that, but you know, there was something in there that he felt that he, I don't know, he's gonna be able to remember Judy was a human, not just data, not just a st statistics. And that he also said there was a, you know, Judy, what we, what we show here, not intentionally, but that a lot of, if something goes wrong on a floor somewhere and doctors and nurses, something happens and that patient leaves the floor, they don't know whatever happens to that patient. And this is, a, this is a film where it shows you that patient keeps going in their families. And also, as I said with Emily's family, I, I realize every doctor and nurse in our movie who, 
they I mean they did what they did, but they're 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 they've got kids, they've got husbands and wives and families and parents and I saw at our trial that everybody was wrecked. Except maybe Dr. Darmstadter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what do you think of that? Uh, I was there in the room when they asked her the, what I thought to be the simplest question in the history of medical questions. Were you concerned about your patient that was in a coma? <laughs> yeah, it's actually 26 seconds, and you can see her do all the math. And she, ha she has to say yes. And she goes, no. <laughs> and, then, and that's probably like the... That's probably, that's probably the most honest she was. She was yeah. concerned. But that's also like, if I could take one moment of the entire film to explain what's wrong, that, that would be it right there. Everything. Right. No. And they kind of forgot that the camera was in the room, you know, uh, that we, we just had a court camera and you know, just kind of, after a while, people forget. And I remember calling you afterwards and I said, you know, Darmstadter was asked this question. And I swear to God, she like, it took her a, a half a minute to answer and then she said the wrong thing. I told my editor this and when I showed it my editor, that clip, he goes, that is a quintessential moment in your movie. Like it's, you know, there's so much of me through this movie. And that is just like, it's just dead silence and uh, speaks volumes for what's wrong with our, our system. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, oh, thank you. Thanks, Chris Lamaster. I'm an ER doc at Kaiser in Northern California. One of the things that I find most resonating about this, and thank you so much to both of you for doing this and sacrificing so much of your lives and showing us how harm ripples out and continues to. Um, thank you. Healthcare is by design fragmented and reductionist. We have specialists that think in their own silos and different groups of people working on their problems, but they're not talking to each other. They're not interacting in ways where they can see the whole. And that's what your movie does. We're able to see every point in time how it impacts the family and how it impacts her and how there are multiple points of harm. And it was just, for me, that was really moving and important. I really thank you for it. Oh, wow, thank you very much. That, that helps me understand a lot, you know, because uh, we, like, again, we're, we're so deep in the weeds, we don't, even now, after it's been out a little over almost four years now, and we still don't really know what happened, you know. But thank you. I want to thank everybody for staying up this late, too. Yeah. Yeah, this was an early morning. You guys are still... You guys are troopers. Yeah. Keep on trucking. Anything else? All right, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so very much.